Donald Trump learned a crucial lesson as a child. Do whatever you have to do. You say whatever you have to say. Winning is everything. Donald Trump is a major deal maker, and he has made his money mainly from Manhattan real estate. Trump, 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 Trump. His name is his power. We realized what Americans really loved was celebrity. If you were a celebrity, everything was possible. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. And if people mocked him? Donald Trump is here tonight. He certainly would bring some change to the White House. <laughs> you should fight back. I am officially running for president of the United States. Here comes the war of the Trumps. It was war, and they were determined to win it. You don't know what he's going to do next. You don't know what's going to happen to him next. This isn't another video about Donald Trump's time as president. There are hundreds of those. Over the years, I've surprised a lot of people. The biggest surprise is yet to come. This is the story of how Donald became Trump. Of all the men who've influenced Donald Trump, none have had a bigger influence than his father. Fred Trump was born in the Bronx to German immigrants, Frederick and Elizabeth. After he finished high school, he took a job as a carpenter's assistant. He liked the work, but he wanted to be the boss. So when he turned 21, Fred incorporated a company, E. Trump and Son, named for his mother, who started the company before Fred was old enough to run it. During the Depression, Fred almost went out of business. But before he did, he got his big break. Fred built one of New York City's first modern self-serve supermarkets and sold it for a profit. He and his business partner used the profits to buy a subsidiary of a bankrupt real estate company for pennies on the dollar. That subsidiary gave them easy access to a bunch of properties that were nearing foreclosure. Fred bought them low, sold them high, and made enough money to turn E. Trump and Son into one of New York's biggest real estate companies. He passed his success on to his children. Donald and his siblings grew up in a house that had 23 rooms, and the family chauffeur drove them to school every morning. Fred also passed on his ruthless streak. Throughout Donald's childhood, his father always gave him the same advice. Work hard, don't be weak, be a killer. Donald took it to heart. He bullied his classmates. He even bullied his younger brother. One day, he threw an eraser at his teacher. Fred immediately took action and sent Donald to a military boarding school upstate. It was a tough, competitive environment, but surprisingly for a rich kid, Donald thrived. He excelled at several sports and was named captain his senior year. In the yearbook, he was named ladies' man. Years later, Donald would credit his time at boarding school with teaching him the discipline he needed to succeed in business and politics. But he knew that discipline by itself wasn't enough. So he went to college, two years at Fordham University, before a transfer to the University of Pennsylvania's business school. After graduating in 1968, Donald Trump joined his father's company. The first few years weren't glamorous. Donald and Fred had to roll up their sleeves and turn around some housing projects which were losing money. For Donald, it was an early lesson. Just because he'd been given lots of advantages, he still needed to work for his success. After a three-year apprenticeship, Donald became president of the company. The torch had been passed from father to son. One of his first moves was to rebrand. E. Trump and Sons sounded stale and old-fashioned. A modern real estate business, led by a dynamic young entrepreneur, needed a glamorous name. So Trump rebranded it to the Trump Organization. It was an early step in the evolution from Donald to Trump. Trump moved into an Upper East Side apartment and started going to some of Manhattan's elite nightclubs, usually with a beautiful woman on his arm. It didn't look like it to most people, but Trump was working. He was marketing his most important commodity, himself. It was right around this time that he made his debut in another high-profile local institution, the New York Times. The Times embodied the elite establishment that, decades later, Trump would build a political career upon opposing. But in the early 1970s, he was anxious for their attention and approval. The first time the New York Times mentioned Donald Trump, it wasn't for a good reason. The headline said it all, Major Landlord Accused of Anti-Black Bias in City. The story concerned a Department of Justice lawsuit filed against Donald Trump and his father, which alleged that the Trump Organization discriminated against African Americans. Even for someone who believed all publicity was good publicity, it was tough reading. Most of the lawyers Trump talked to urged him to settle, but that just wasn't who he was. 
Trump met Roy Cohn at a swanky Manhattan nightclub in the early 1970s. Trump was complaining to anyone who'd listen that he couldn't find a lawyer who believed he could win the discrimination lawsuit. Cohn offered his services. He filed a $100 million countersuit against the Department of Justice. Although it was unsuccessful, the final settlement ultimately allowed the Trump Organization to get away without admitting any wrongdoing. It was a win for Trump, and a lesson he'd carry with him for the rest of his life. Never admit your mistakes. Roy Cohn was Donald Trump's lawyer for 15 years. This is a picture of Donald and me in which he says, uh, Roy is my greatest friend. 